assassination attempt on former President Trump won't be erased from America's conscience anytime soon. Associated Press photographer Evan Vucci was directly in front of the stage when he heard the gunshots. He says he ran closer to the stage when Secret Service agents smothered the former president to protect him and then escorted him to safety. For many of you, the evening news continues right after this break, while others can watch the rest of this on the CBS News app. Hi, I'm Greg. It is remarkable to watch that because in less than two minutes, the Secret Service was able to take the former president from the podium after being shot to his secure vehicle. For reaction from the scene and inside the Trump campaign, let's bring in our chief election campaign correspondent, Robert Costa, and congressional correspondent, Scott McFarlane. Scott, you were there when the gunshots rang out. I know you witnessed that carnage up close. You had to take cover yourself. What can you tell us tonight? Let's start with the scene of this crime, Nora. It is untouched, almost frozen in place. They have kept so many things that were there in place as the FBI leads this investigation. When they evacuated us out of there just five or ten minutes after the shooting, they said, leave your stuff behind, get out. So chairs, belongings, bags, even our TV equipment has been there for 24 hours. And the huge flag they erected over former President Trump's head for the speech is still there, hanging from cranes. Nora, people ran as fast as they could for the perimeter. But now, the FBI is on site for what may be a very slow and meticulous, unique criminal investigation in American history. And Scott, what kind of evidence have they been able to gather today? Well, they're able to go through a site that was jammed with thousands of people yesterday, which gives them an opportunity to see the ground, see the spaces that were covered by the crowds yesterday. And I can tell you, when we were taking cover, things were flying. Tables, equipment, bags. We were jumping off the rafters where the media were standing, looking for cover wherever we could find it. People who were in the seats were trying to get below their chairs. In the immediate aftermath of the shooting and the assassination attempt, I was texting with Donald Trump Jr., the president's son, and he said his father was telling people he was fine. And that's what, that was the refrain in the early hours after the assassination attempt, the former president saying he's fine. But in the past 24 hours, as it settled in, how seismic this moment was in Trump's life, for his family, for his friends, for his closest advisors, According to people who have spoken directly with him, he's been contemplative about this moment, about how he was perhaps an inch or two away, maybe even less, 
from having his life ended. This is someone who is musing in groups in private, has his family and friends around him at this time as he moves from Bedminster, New Jersey to Milwaukee, Wisconsin for the Republican National Convention, talking to, the, to a lot of people on the phone, taking the calls, not being private and just with his family at this moment, really talking to friends and spending time with them as well. Robert Costa, thank you for that new reporting. And in just over an hour, President Biden will address the nation from the Oval Office to discuss the attempted assassination on former President Donald Trump. The president is calling for unity, saying the attack is sick and that there is no place in America for this kind of violence. CBS's Nancy Cordes reports from the White House. And said today that he has directed the FBI to be thorough and swift in its investigation. And he said that the investigators will have all the resources they need to get the job done. He spoke after meeting with his national security team in the Situation Room. He said he still doesn't know the shooter's motive. And he cautioned Americans not to make any assumptions about the shooter and his affiliations until the FBI has had a chance to learn more. The president also acknowledged some of the mounting questions about how this shooter was able to get so close to a presidential candidate in the first place. Biden said there would be an outside probe into that. Take a listen. I've directed an independent review of the national security at yesterday's rally to assess exactly what happened. And we'll share the results of that independent review with the American people as well. The president was supposed to travel to Austin, Texas tomorrow for a civil rights event. That trip has now been postponed as he anticipates more briefings. And this Oval Office address tonight will only be President Biden's third since taking office. He'll have an update on the investigation and urge Americans to not just condemn, but bring an end to political violence. Nora. Nancy Cordes, that's right, and we will cover the president's remarks live here on CBS. Thank you. Well, tonight the FBI says the attack on former President Donald Trump is being investigated as an assassination attempt, but also as a potential act of domestic terrorism. The nation's premier law enforcement agency identified the gunman as 20-year-old Thomas Matthew Crooks from Bethel Park, Pennsylvania. That's about an hour south from the site of the rally. One of the other interesting things that we are learning from the FBI as they have been briefing reporters, is at this point they do believe that the shooter acted alone. They are also taking some of the evidence that they have gathered, and they have sent that to Quantico, Virginia, in order to look at those things. So it's his cell phone, it's that rudimentary explosive devices that they have uh, found in the car and in the home. So they are looking at all of that. We also learned from the FBI that there has been a spike online and they're concerned about more political violence so they are monitoring that as well let's bring in cbs's charlie demar he is in the gunman's neighborhood and charlie i know you have been talking to investigators and other people what have we learned about the shooter yeah yeah, we've learned a lot, Nora. This is still a very active crime scene. We are in front of that shooter's house. Police have been focusing much of their attention in front of the shooter's house. Right now, police say that a motive for the attempted assassination has not been determined. A bomb squad vehicle was seen outside the shooter's home Sunday after the FBI said it found rudimentary explosives in the 20-year-old's car. The shooter graduated from Bethel Park High School in 2022. Video shows the moment he received his diploma. Former classmates say he was rejected from the rifle team, and some ex-classmates describe him as a loner, while others say he was smart and a good student. Now, CBS News has just learned that the shooter had a membership to a local gun club, and investigators at this point believe that the shooter acted alone, and he was not on the radar of law enforcement. Nora? That is really interesting, Charlie Demara. Thank you for those updates. We'll put this dark new chapter in American politics into historical perspective when our special coverage continues. You are bountiful.